Hi guys, my name's Pam. Welcome back to my channel, The Wooly Dragon. Um, this is going to be a continuation of my seed palooza, my seed organizing, organizes, um, just me checking out what seeds I still have and what I need to replace and seeds that I may have forgotten that I had so I don't have to buy more. Um, so we'll just we'll just go from there. So last week we kind of went over the herb seeds that I have, um, that kind of stuff. So today I'm gonna do flowers, flower seeds that I have and kind of show you a little bit because I didn't really do any kind of system for um, timing of how I can keep track of when I need to sow seeds and things like that. Um, so the flowers give a little bit better indication of what my method of my madness is. And it's nothing fancy. I showed you the handy dandy plastic file folder that I used for storing all my seeds throughout the year. And this is my, my version of, you know, how I keep everything straight. So basically Ziploc bags. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive. Um, you know, these have been reused several years. So, you know, recycle, reuse, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so basically what I do is for my veggies especially and for my flowers, a little bit with my herbs because some of the herbs are more perennial and I usually only have to grow some of these seeds if I need to replace, you know, if we had a real bad winter. By the way, I hope you all, whoever survived that Arctic blast we got over the Christmas holiday, oh my God, I live in East Tennessee, so I don't have to deal with the Great White North. But uh, yeah, we had uh, four straight days of, we had temperatures in single digits, which I mean, we, we do get temperatures in single digits pretty much every winter, but not several days in a row. Me no likey. I mean, I was born and raised in South Florida. I can't live in South Florida anymore because it's too hot for me and plus menopause, oh my gosh. Um, but these last four days, Christmas was not fun. I'm just gonna say it. I mean, we, we postponed doing the Christmas dinner and all that kind of stuff just because Sunday was so miserable outside and so we just kind of postponed it until, you know, being partially British, you know, we, we did our Christmas, you know, stuff on Boxing Day. So normally we're British aristocracy. This time we're, you know, we work for the aristocracy, I guess. Ain't that the truth. But, um, yeah, so hope everyone did okay. I kind of got by fairly um, Scott Free, um, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is in charge of um, a lot of the electrical electricity produced in Tennessee and surrounding states, um, they had to do rolling blackouts on Friday and Saturday. That was fun. So basically, everybody's power is turned off for like 20 minutes at a time, several times during the day, which I can kind of understand, but why they couldn't have said, hey, so tomorrow we're gonna do rolling blackouts. It was like, you know, power went out. Oh, it's because we're having rolling blackouts. <laughs> that's a little that's a little late in my book for, for warning people. But uh so hope everyone's okay. And now we get now that Christmas is over and New Year's is a few days away, the planning, really heavy duty planning for next year's garden really starts about now. So this is my little system with a Ziploc bag. I don't know if you can read, put my hand over here, but I just basically in Sharpie pen, I just write flowers and then you'll notice the date, um, 215, or, yeah, 215, which basically means middle of February, these are the seeds that need to kind of get put in the ground or planted. And in this thing, I, most of the stuff that I had in this bag, I really should not have put in this bag. It was way too soon. I had a lot of plants last year that were coming up, you know, middle of March, you know, the beginning of March 
and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and could not get, you know, there's no way I could have put them out because they would have died if I put them out before I knew frosts were over and stuff like that. So I've kind of backed out on, backed up on that. You know, the February sewing for a lot of things, not as extensive as it used to be. But two, you know, a couple of things that I do do are the uh, flowers that can be planted in, oh, look at my hair now that I put my glasses on. I swear, I just brushed my hair. Flyaways when you're over 50 suck. Nothing holds it down. Gray hair. <clears throat> Meltdown's over. Mm. Okay. Uh, so basically what I have in this bag for the middle of February are plants that I can work, what's called winter sown. And I just have a designated, my raised bed, just an area out in the backyard, something like that that I can just broadcast seeds and what comes up comes up. So kind of one of the things I have, um, I have the, this is corn flour. I had mentioned, I think the two episodes, no, last episode. I had gone over, I had, I had a uh, shipment from Select Seeds that I showed y'all, memories. Anyway, so I had a, bought a variety of corn flowers at Select Seed called uh, Blue Diadem. This is the pack of the, the corn flowers that I uh, planted last year, the ultraviolet. And uh, I like them. These guys supposedly are a little taller and spindlier. And the blue diadem is supposedly a little bit more compact and makes a nice, a little bit more presentable plant, I guess is a good word for it. It doesn't kind of sprawl as much as this did, because it did. I like the flowers, but it just, it didn't look pretty except for the flowers. The other one I got last year, seed packet I got, is a plant called Mignonette. And I planted some of these last year. I can't remember. I can't remember if I put them outside too soon and they died or if they just didn't go. I can't remember now. Luckily, I write stuff down. I just didn't open up that, that program on my computer to, to remind myself before I did this. But, so the thing about Mignonette is it's not really, you know, going back to the... The other one not being much to look at except for the flowers. This doesn't even have the flowers really to recommend it, but what it does have, what the flowers do have, is they are supposed to be so fragrant. People back in Victorian times used to stick this in like little bouquets and stuff like that and would just supposedly just um, be like spring in a bottle kind of deal. So I bought some of that because they're supposed to also be good bee plants. Bees are supposed to go crazy for this. So I think what I will do, hardy annual, sowing, sow outdoors in early spring. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do this. I think I tried to plant these actually in seed trays inside. So I may try it outside and just see what happens. The other one that I really, really like, this is called uh, Sweet Rocket. We also call them Dame's Rocket around here. Um, these are just a bright, cheery little plant. There are biennials, biennials. They, they, life cycle is two years long. So what basically happens is they grow wild around here. They're usually along roadsides and in the medians of road highways and things like that. They come, they go early spring and they're gone and then either get mowed down by the road crews or just go away. Um, I planted some of this last year and some of it came up, did not flower because of course it was just the first year. So I'm hoping that those guys come back. If they don't, I'm just gonna, you know, do the whole 
spreading it around and just see what comes and what doesn't kind of deal. And then last year I had, for the very first time of ever trying to grow poppies, I've heard that they do better if you just direct sow them, but I kind of like to know where my flowers are going so I can just kind of pop them in places. So I may try doing, um, you know, sectioning off a little section of one of my raised beds to just be kind of like an outdoor seed starting area and just make sure that I and just kind of broadcast it and stuff like that. And then when plants do come up, if they get enough big of a size, I can carefully pull them up and transplant in other places. It's the only other thing I can think to do. But last year what I did is I had this little area. Um, I have a couple of videos uh, this last early summer, I think that is actually about poppies and I, I kind of more explain more. But I just went out and I just broadcast a bunch of different poppy seeds. I grew two different kinds last year. I did, both of these are from Select Seeds. Um, this is Lauren's Grape. And it actually is that color, it's beautiful. And then I did the uh, Amazing Gray. Those are pretty too. Except mine were more purpley than gray. I've seen pictures in other seed catalogs and stuff like that where the pictures, you know, show that they're actually gray or they look gray. These, mine, the ones that I had, I didn't have any white ones come up. They were all the purpley kind. But between these two, the darker mauvey purple and then the, the bright grape purple, uh, I had bees working those flowers. The only problem with the poppies, I, you know, if this is actually a thing, I don't know if it just got too hot too quickly for them or if this just is, I'm guessing this is what poppies do, is just they flower and then they're done. So I left um, the seed heads on them to let them all the seeds come out. And when I was, you know, cutting off the, the stems and everything like that, getting the bed ready, I just made sure that I was taking off the little heads and shaking whatever seeds may still have been in there and stuff like I've got a third kind um, from the MI Gardener that I just got my shipment for today. This is the Black Swan Poppy. It's all ruffly. So I'm going to give that a try. Yes, Pearl? How she can deal with sinus problems as long I have no idea so I'm excited about this one so I'm just gonna take all these seeds and just kind of middle of February comes probably when I go out to prune my apple trees and things like that I will probably take them out and throw them out in good in places that I think they'll do well so that's it for February so the next Ziploc bag is labeled for March 1st, so the beginning of March, and there's a lot of them. I'm not probably not gonna grow all of these guys, but uh, we'll see which ones I like. And then of course, <laughs> it just depends on what new ones I also get. I really shouldn't have to, to plant any more or buy any more seeds for this year, but I'm still gonna, I mean, I've already bought from two different companies before Christmas and I'm probably gonna buy from at least four more. Don't know why, just do. Guess it's better than gambling or alcoholism or something. All right, so a lot of these are were fairly new to me last year and there were some that I really loved and there were some that I, that I started out with. Um, wasn't too awful sure if I was going to keep going and then they hit their stride later on in the year after I'd already made up my mind that I wasn't and they turned out to do very well so for me so we will just see what I like and what I didn't like so the first one is a geridum they're all these are also called uh, floss flowers and I got this is a mix from Baker Creek. I got the purple, I got white ones, I got ones that were more pink. 
So I really like that. Let me see how many seeds are still in here. Do I have to buy more? And then I don't really know if how well they do for self-seeding. I have to do a little research. Oh, got a lot of seeds left. Okay. They're teeny. You just scatter them on the surface. You don't cover them with soil. You gotta have a grow light or something like that on them for later. All right. So these are another one that the bees really liked. And plus they're pretty. And they went all year long. They did not stop flowering until frost. So from like late April, mid, you know, to mid-May when I planted them out. This was one of the ones that I grew that I didn't know, I didn't think they were going to do very well, and they ended up doing fabulously. And you can, when they get a lot of little spots on them that where the flowers, they kind of grow in bunches of flowers all over the place, um, you can just pinch them back, and then they'll just send out more. At least they did for me. So, yes, a geratum. I'm probably going to get ones the outside that went to seed, but having that cold weather these last few days, you know, I'm not going to, I'm just going to plant more just to hedge my bets. Uh, this is sweet alyssum. This is just the white kind. I think I'm going to also see about getting the blue kind. Because uh, this was another one that I didn't think was going to do very well. And it it also ended up doing great. And it has this nice little scent. It's not like in your face smell or anything like that. But it smells kind of like honey. And the bees really liked it. I, pla I actually planted a couple right in front of one of my beehives. I have, uh, I made a, like a, a row where I just took landscape timbers and then made a two-sided that was basically, you know, you know, using the timbers as the border and then just putting compost and topsoil and stuff like that on top, in between. Hey, Beaker, we're not going out, okay? Thank you. They are definitely got cabin fever. Yes, I know, you've already been out today. You'll go out tomorrow. But uh, just made this, and it's like 15 feet long, something like that. So I have a couple of dwarf fruit trees planted along it. In between two of the fruit trees, I have a beehive, and the rest of it I just did like annuals and things like that. Just kind of take up space. And I put, I had a couple of extra of the sweet, sweet alyssum left over that I couldn't find another spot to put them. So I just put them in front of the beehive. Um, thinking, oh, they won't do any well. They won't do any well, very well anyway, so, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. They grew and they grew. They partially covered the exit entrance that the bees have on their hive, but the foliage and everything like that was sparse enough that it kind of, it was kind of like giving them a little secret entrance kind of deal, and they just zoomed in and out, and, uh, bees were all over it covering it so yes definitely gonna plant more of these gonna get the blue ones as well to give me some variety next one I got last year is balsam now I had been watching I there's a few YouTube channels that I I watch on both beekeeping or gardening um, and there's one what is it black mountain bees something like that that he had done a video in one of the areas where he keeps his bees that they have a bunch of balsam. Now this isn't the same exact kind of balsam. Um, it's a form of impatience. And I'm not usually a, a big fan of the impatience and things like that. You see at the, at the lows and things like that. But I did some reading and found that balsam actually the bees actually like and it will bloom again for a really long time and it did uh, it's kind of weird the way the way it grows it has these like single that like little strap like leaves that come out and then the flowers themselves are fastened in around the stem so they're in close into the plant where the leaves come out and so 
and it has the flowers. I had white ones, I had the purple ones, I had red ones. So they were pretty pretty. And I'm pretty sure these guys won't come back. Um, so I'll plant them probably six more for next year and plant them here and there. So this is a new one that I got at MI Gardener. It's called Spotted Bee Balm. I've got the Lemon Mint Bee Balm and then the Wild Bee Balm that I've already been growing. I saw this and um, decided I'd give it a try. But it's also supposed to be very good for the bees. And it's just, it's just kind of interesting. You see that? So the flowers, I've not seen flowers on the bee balms quite like that. You know, they kind of have like a, yeah. Excuse me, my cats are doing their zoomies. Must be dinner time. But I uh, just thought I'd give this a try and see what happens. This is a good for pollinators. You can use it as cut flowers. Eh, eh. Ah, perennial. And so, MI Gardener is up in Michigan, so I'm guessing if it survives in Michigan, it should survive here in Tennessee. So we'll give it a try. Now, this next variety, I don't think I even tried growing last year. I don't know why. It's called Butterfly Flower. Dr. Badger's mix. I got it at Select Seeds last year. And truthfully, I don't even remember what the picture looked like. So I'm going to have to go back and look. So if I can, I'll remember try and remember to put a picture up right around here. So that you and I both know what this looks like. And... See if I can get this going. If I remember correct, most of the stuff that I plant either is really, really unusual looking or fabulously beautiful or a bee plant or all the above. We'll hope it's all three. Um, but yeah, so we'll see. A lot of plants already, right? So calendula. I love calendula. But for some reason, mine don't tend to self soak as much as other people's tends to do. So I have just regular calendula, pop mart marigold, um, this is seed from 2019. It was still going last year, so I'm going to assume it's going this year. And then this is a variety called uh, Bullseye. It's got a darker red center. The other one's just straight yellow. These are very pretty last year, too. So growing more, you guys. And this is Coreopsis or Tick Seed. And it's just called Dyer's Coreopsis. I believe I got it because the Dyer in the title, D-Y-E-R, since I dye yarns and stuff like that, um, just to see how easy. And I think I planted it. Uh, I think I planted this and I seeded it for indoor germination. And I don't think anything came up. I know I didn't have anything in the garden that went with that description, so, yeah. Again, no picture, so I'll try and put a picture in the description so you can see for yourself. I like Cosmos. I really do. I'm not It's crazy about the ones that get, like, 12 feet tall. Exaggeration, but, you know, five or six feet tall, just too much for the little bit of space that I have to put them in. So I got, evidently two different varieties from two different spots that miraculously look very similar to each other. So I got uh, Rubinato from Select Seeds and I got Rubenza from Baker Creek. Both of them were red shades, both of them were kind of dwarfy. I think, I don't think they got much over two feet. 
which I liked. And they bloomed like crazy. They did really great. Um, so I may choose to just do one. I'll look look at the, the description, the picture, and select seeds on this one just to see if, it, if one appeals to me more than the other. Um, I believe I bought them both the same last year at the same time. So this has less seeds. This has more seeds. Yeah, we'll just see what happens. I may flip a coin. I tried growing four o'clocks last year. Um, these are the things that they're supposed to, the petals are supposed to open in mid to late afternoon. It's the same four o'clock and uh, supposed to smell nicely. Um, everything that I read, it was watching on YouTube videos and things like that about doing four o'clocks is you have, there's a tendency for them to be, you know, pay in the butt kind of deal, very uh, voracious and self-sewing and you can't get rid of them basically. Well, evidently last year was not the year. I think part of it was we did have a pretty long, hot, dry summer and that started earlier than I was expecting. And just as they were growing, because they grew well for me, the, the seeds and everything, this is another one of the ones that I grew. I started back in February last year. Should not do it. I may even put this to the middle of March instead of the first of March, just because of that. But uh, it grew well for me, but when I put it in the ground, I think it just didn't get enough rain. And I, you know, just to save money on water bills and things like that, I have a tendency when there's drought situations, I put more emphasis on where there's veggies growing than flowers. So I think it may have gone to the wayside. All right, so we're gonna put you over on the March 15th pack just so we can remember. Another one, I got this. This is Honeywort Kiwi Blue from Baker Creek last year. This is another one that the bees are supposed to really, really like. It is related to I want to say it's related to um, is it a relative of borage. So it's similar to borage. So it doesn't like hot stuff. Um, I got this let's see, August, September, something like that. And I went ahead and just took a chance and I grew a couple. I, I planted some inside, grew them up, planted the, them out in the garden. And then we just got a really bad cold spell at the beginning of October that knocked out a lot of stuff. And I think this one, it just wasn't far enough along to be able to withstand. And uh, so it, it grew, but it never put out any kind of flowers for me. So we're gonna try again next spring. Then I am a sucker for pansies, but I've never really been able to grow the the usual kind that you can get at the big box stores and things like that, the ones that come in the six packs and already already flowering and stuff like that. However, last year I got well, I've got a lot of stuff here, but we'll do it one at a time. So this is the Black King pansy from Baker Creek. I planted these last year. Some of them did come up. One thing that I have found with, at least for the with the violas and Johnny Jump Ups and things like that, once you get them there and they start self sowing, you can't get rid of them. So we'll see if if this kind of stuff is not quite so hybridized, it'll come back. Um, so I do have some that grew last year and flowered. We'll see if those come back, but I'm going to probably go ahead and, and sow them. So we've got the Black King, and this is Lake of Fun. I just love that color blue. And then the two together. I'm a goth girl in disguise. Um, other things I got, this is a Viola, which is kind of like the, the country cousin of pansies. And I just thought those are so gorgeous. I don't think think I planted any of these last year so we'll do this and then I have my old standbys of the Johnny Jump Ups which these self so like crazy but I love them so much I don't care they can go wherever they want and then this is um, a Cornuta 
Viola. This is just, these are Fairy Morse. I got these, I think I got these at Walmart a few years ago. And I think these come back as well. And it could be that they will cross pollinate. We'll just have to see. And as long as they're pretty, I don't care. All right, so this is a group of stuff that I may or may not try for this year, considering there were, how many packs here? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. Nope, not done yet, <laughs> 18. So this is Salvia. This is the floral version of sage. Um, this is Victoria Blue. This is the one I've been planning for like three years now, and it's dandy. It even actually does come back in the in the in the springtime. Um, so I haven't had to plant a whole lot of those. I I usually do like plant maybe four or six, four or five six, for the spring, so I can put them in. After this weather, we just had. You know, it's very possible that they've all been, you know, knocked out and I'm going to have to replant everything. We'll just, we'll just have to wait and see. But it's just a pretty blue color, fairly dwarf. Um, I also had a variety of salvia last year called Flame that had a red flower. It just, it didn't appeal to me as much for some reason. I think it was just a little too flashy. I like, I like red, but I don't like it like Flame. And then also grew stocks for the first time last year. These were really good, and the bees also liked them. Um, these are a dwarf variety. Um, does it say how tall they get? Not on the pack. But I've got it written down somewhere. So yeah, this, I think if I remember correctly, this only got like maybe 18 inches tall. And then how these nice little pretty flowers on them. So bees like these things too. They're good for cut flowers. I have to remind myself this next year to go out and cut more flowers and bring them in, put them in vases and things like that because they're cheery. As long as the cats don't knock them over and you get water all over your carpet. All right, so now these are the ones that questionable whether or not I'm gonna grow. So, Painted Daisy. So these guys, they're a perennial, and I grew this for the first time in 2020, and I think I ended up with one plant, and I went ahead and planted it out in the spot where I have a bunch of flowers, and it, I think by the end of the, of the when summer started hitting, it may have been like four inches in diameter, you know, something like that. No flowers, so it didn't do anything. And then the hot weather hit and it pretty much just shriveled up and died. And I was like, well, that was the end of the Painted Daisy. But then the following year, 2021, luckily I had left a little plant label in the, in the same area. So, you know, just because it is perennial, I thought, eh, I'll just leave this here just in case it does decide to bounce back. And it did. I know it was like late winter, early spring, started seeing green leaves coming up that look vaguely like what was there the year before. And this time it grew to be about maybe eight inches in diameter and it started sending out nice pink flowers. Like these. Not the white, but kind of like this kind of color. And again, hot weather hit, shriveled up and died, went away. I mean, went away. It was like, you know, one of those ephemeral kind of plants. And I, then I noticed in the fall, it started making, you know, it was, looked like it was growing back again. Um, so this last year, again, started, green, you know, greening up in the spring. And this time it's, you know, about 12, 15 inches in diameter, setting up way more flowers. And so I'm hoping that it just continues to, to increase. So I just have the one so I'm trying to decide if I want to wait until I have a little bit more free space. I'm in the process of putting in a bed 
around a crab apple tree that I have video on, but I haven't I haven't shared the video because I haven't finished it yet. This weather keeps blocking me, delaying me. So you may see the the cool cement block bed that I'm putting up three years from now. <laughs> but I may I may grow some more if I can get this done. If we get some, it's supposed to get to the seventies next week. So you know, for those of you who don't live in in East Tennessee. You know, if you move here, you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it's going to change. I mean, we have, you know, subarctic temperatures and winds and crap one day, and then the next day it's balmy 70s and the bugs come back. <laughs> but, yeah, so I may put some more of this. We'll see how far I get in actually finishing the bed first. Um, the Malva. This is a relative of hollyhocks in marshmallow, I believe. And yes, there is actually a plant called marshmallow. And yes, they do actually, did actually use the roots of the marshmallow plant to make marshmallows, but they don't do that anymore. So um, I'll try and flash this on the screen if I can find a picture. Um, I, plant, I planted, I have a couple of them out there. Um, they have really pretty little flowers. They look like little um, hollyhock flowers. Kind of almost like uh, hibiscus flowers. Not kind of a cross. But they're like purple with stripes and stuff like that. Um, if I remember correctly. But they just seem, the plants themselves seem rather puny to me. So I may, don't know what I'm, quite what I'm going to do. Um, may throw a little fertilizer to them this year, although I don't usually do that with my flowers, but you know, anything to get it through. Um, but I may plant more. Again, just have to wait and see how I feel. But uh, it just, the plants themselves just don't look that great. They keep coming back. You know, that's not the problem, but yeah. Um, Rebecca or Black Eyed Susan, um, this is, depending on the seed catalog you look at, the, brand, the variety is either Gold Strum or Gold Sturm. Still haven't been able to figure out which is which, which is the correct one. But uh, I had this one and I had another variety called Cherry Brandy that I planted at the same time. The Gold Strum has been going for three years now. This year, if they come back, will be the, th the fourth year. It keeps going, it keeps flowering. No complaints. The cherry brandy, on the other hand, it did well the first year. Um, didn't do so great the following year, and now it's completely gone. So I think I'm just gonna stick with a gold sturm shrum uh, for right now. And just for your own, you know, identification. So this is def definitely just a, you know, a black eyed Susan. It's got the black center and then it's got the yellow petals. The cherry brandy, which I really like the color of, the petals were, you know, still had the black center, but the petals were like a red chocolatey brown color. Nice. But, uh, of course, the, the plain old tried and true, I guess, is always better. And then I have these are Gerbera daisy seeds. That, I'm guessing they're just daisies. I think they're kind of like the painted daisies. But them, oh, just kick my camera. Don't do that. Um, I haven't been able to get these to, to germinate. So the seed's going on three years of age. I think what I'll do is I will just go ahead and plant whatever is left. You know, get them seeded, see what comes up. If nothing comes up, then that's the end of my Gerbera daisy planting experience. And then lastly, thing of, I don't know if I'm going to plant or not. I've had the seed since 2018. Still don't have a successful planting. Same deal. If I plant the rest of these seeds this year. Nothing comes of it. I'm done with Nadia. 
Um, the thing about the Mattia, um, if I'm remembering correctly, it's more, it's kind of like along the lines of the Hollyhocks and that kind of stuff. but the flowers are supposed to be highly scented and kind of smell tropical, like pina colada or something like that. So uh, I'll see if I can find a picture and put it up for you. But uh, yeah, so I haven't had success with that yet. 2023 is the last year. It could be if they don't come up this year, it could be just that it's because the seed's old, and it's just not gonna germinate for me, no matter what I try. But okay, flap on my jaw, time for a drink. Okay, so what do I have? Not as much for middle of March planting. Um, we had the four o'clock, so I moved over from the beginning of March to the middle of March. I've got two different kinds of dahlias. I've got, this is the mignon, and this is the unwins. I also had um, Bishop's Children that I got at Select Seeds. The last video I did, um, I'm finding I really, really liked dahlias and growing them from seed is a lot easier than I thought. Now I still have the um, tubers that I dug up from this last fall, um, which I will, basically what I did last year, um, I had a tuber, I had dug up a tuber from a plant that I had gotten at a produce stand. And I did, I did some research and found, you know, you dig up the tubers and store them for the winter so you don't get, you know, cold and frozen or anything like that. Um, and then in the spring, you can either wait until it warms up long enough, you know, that everything's, the soil is going to be nice and warm because they do not like cold, supposedly. What I did, since I just had the one plant that I, I split into two pieces, I planted each in a pot, let it grow to, you know, brought it in, you know, had it inside, let them grow under grow lights. And then after the frost, I planted them outside. Um, and then I planted the seeds for these two varieties also last spring and the tubers that I got dug up last fall, you know, Few, just a couple months ago um same deal i dug everything up cut off the stems stored them in sawdust the only thing i'm worried about is that i left them i kept them in my basement slash garage which normally stays warmer but since i had water pipes freezing i don't know exactly i need to get a thermometer down there um, if we have any more winters like this one and just see how cold it gets, it may very well be that every one of those things dies and I'm just going to have to start over fresh with the seeds. But that's one of the reasons why I like, kind of like doing the seeds because if your tubers decide they want to croak, just grow more. I like that. Um, Marigold, this is Superhero Spry. variety this is fairly old seed two 2019 but it's another one that keeps coming back and it's you know i'll get a little picture and put it up it's it just keeps going um you don't have to do a lot of deadheading i generally as a, as a general rule as the plant's just starting to get done i do keep it deadheaded but eventually i mean it grows you know so it's like at least you know 18 inches wide and uh we don't really have to deal with uh, nematodes in my area as much as other places in the country, you know, the world. But uh, mainly it's just there because I like marigolds. I uh, did two kinds of snapdragons. One is called Black Prince. That I don't have seeds for. I'm going to have to buy more. That is another one of my goth alluring things 
it actually is the foliage is really dark you know as opposed to just green foliage it's it looks, it's almost like black blackish green foliage and then the flowers themselves are really deep 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 red almost black and i really like it um one of these days when i have enough space and enough room to stuff i may have just a goth section somewhere just to appeal me and then the second kind i got just kind of supplement is this is um, tequila sunrise for obvious reasons very tropical very bright very colorful i like it but not as much as my my black prince i really like that one so i have to buy more of the black prints um vinca or uh periwinkles so i used to call them these things used to go wild down in florida where i used to live in south florida that i never really thought but these things are very frost tender you know it gets in the 40s and they're pretty much gone um but they have a whole bunch of different colors i am very particular to the red colors so i generally try to find seed that is red not the pink or the fuchsia or anything like that, but red, red, red. Um, I don't think I even planted or even tried to plant these last year, but these are ones that you get going and it's kind of one of those things that you cross your fingers that they're gonna germinate. You know, they don't get damping off disease and things like that, so. But when they grow, they grow really, really well. So this is Nicotiana. And it's called Bronze Queen, and it has this beautiful picture. And I grew this last year. I had it out in, in one bed, and the flowers just looked brown. They didn't look mauve or purpley or anything like that. Um, and you'd think, being in East Tennessee, I live in Greene County. Greene County is like the burly tobacco growing capital of the planet kind of deal so I should be able to grow this but it just did not do well so I don't know if I want to try it or not again next year I may just give this to a friend who might want to try it and see if they have better luck just because I just don't have enough space to keep experimenting all right so that's it for March planting uh, most of April 1st planting are going to be nasturtiums. I've got a whole bunch of different kinds. I've got, not all these have flowers. Try and put pictures up. This is Orchid Flame, um, Alaska, Black Velvet. Really like that one. Again, goth with the dark red. Um, Gleam Mix. Uh, this is the Parks Fragrant Giant which I've grown a couple times now. I don't really smell anything. I don't know if my sniffer's broken when it comes to nasturtium, but, and then I have, this is night and day, which basically has the dark red, which was also the same kind as the black velvet. So you can see the black velvet is the black, or the darker one. And uh, then the, the day is the whitish yellow color. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think I got another kind of nasturtium from Select Seeds last week. So now I have seven. And I usually only grow a couple of each and parse them around. Uh, zinnias. I am low down on my zinnia seeds, so I need to look for another variety. Thanks for jostling my camera, Liz. You're such a, a sweetie. So just regular good old zinnia. This is the Violet Queen. This is the taller ones that get, you know, for cutting flowers and things like that. Does look like that, although some of my flowers are a little bit more pinky than that. So I don't know if that was just a issue with that picture or not, but yeah. So pretty red or pr pretty purple. And then I have uh, the Profusion uh, zinnias, which I really, really like. They're more low growing you can put them in the front of borders that kind of stuff and basically what happens is that you know you grow them just like zinnias and they just keep flowering and you don't really have to deadhead um i've got two different kinds i've got the profusion red and profusion apricot 
I grew both of them last couple of years. I really prefer the red. Just that seems to be my color for zinnias. Um, I don't have many of the apricot left, so I may just go ahead and plant those out and just get rid of them. But I need to look for another variety to supplement my zinnia because the pollinators really like zinnia and uh, so do I. Um, I grew, I bought these sweet peas, Kupani's original, these nice red and purple flowers. Didn't have any success with them. I may just go ahead and finish out growing these. And this is um, runner beans, the painted lady. I grew, also grew them last year. I didn't have a problem. I didn't have a, a good year for beans last year at all. Beans, peas, um, sweet peas didn't do well. There are three seeds left in here. I may go ahead and just plant them just to see what happens if they don't have if they don't grow this year. Then that experiment is done. And then lastly, so that was for planting. I've got marked April 1st, but usually it's just somewhere April 1st to the middle of April, depending on how things are going. So basically I've only got two different things for later on, which is basically after the first, after frosts are pretty much well and done. So I have it marked for May 1st. Again, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If I don't get to it till June, I don't get to it till June. But, so these are the cardinal climbers that I had mentioned on a previous video. I can't remember exactly when um, that went. But this... I try it when I did this. I grew it where I normally grow it. Normally, it's very it grows like weed, covered in blue in red flowers for the for the uh, hummingbirds and things like that. This last year it grew, but it didn't it didn't wow me like it normally has. So I'm wondering if this seed is too old. It is from 2016, so we're going on you know, nine years, seven years, nine years, seven years, seven math so I went ahead and when I made my order with select seeds I bought a new pack so I may just go ahead and get rid of the old seed and just start with a new one for later and then I have two different kinds of sunflowers um, this is the Italian white which is the more um, ornamental type When I'm growing my sunflowers, you know, I, I love all these, the kinds that you can use for indoors for cutting flowers and taking inside and putting in vases and things like that. The one thing that I don't like as much that other people really, really like um, is that a lot of the people who grow the, the types that are more ornamental for cut flowers, the pollen count is really, really low. And one of the things that I really do grow like to grow sunflowers for is you know so the bees they don't necessarily get a lot of nectar from sunflowers but they get a lot of pollen um and during a time of year then they kind of kind of need them because sunflowers are usually out and about when you know there aren't as many flowers so sunflowers with pollen and stuff like that for the the baby bees that they're gonna um be raising so those i bought in 2021 these i bought last year these are just uh, a variety that's the black oil sunflower seeds that you see in the uh, um, bird seed, the mixed bird seeds and stuff like that. The stuff that's really, really pricey right now. However, the stuff I grew from seed, not noticeably different from the volunteers that, that come up underneath the bird feeders. <laughs> so I may have wasted my money on this packet, but it's, it's still good. Um, so that's my flowers. We're 50, almost 53 minutes into this. Didn't think it was going to take this long. Sorry, rambling. Um, so this will probably come out after New Year's. So everyone have a great New Year's. Um, don't know how your 2022 went. Mine could have been better. Could have been worse too. But here's hoping that 2023 is a fabulous year for everybody and you know the usual don't 
don't drink and drive, designated driver, don't do anything I would do or would do during my college days. Um, yeah, so everyone have a great one. The next video with the veggies, oh my lord, that's going to be 12 hours long. So that one I may split up into two parts. So this is going to be continuing on for a while. Um, I will probably be already sowing the seeds by the time this little series is over. And also by then I should have more deliveries of from other companies and things like that. Um, the stuff that I got, I showed you a couple things from my gardener um, that were... Oh, I forgot it's gonna be longer sorry so I got two things from my gardener the reason why I got them even though they're probably very unpractical impractical should, probably should not have done it but the packets are two dollars each and uh, we'll give it a try so coffee I'm gonna try and grow a coffee plant I have absolutely no vision that I'm going to be opening up my own Starbucks here with this because these are tropical plants and I only have so much room in my house and I don't have a greenhouse heated or otherwise so I may grow one to be like a house plant and see what happens we'll, we'll just see so I think I'm okay for a while because it says it takes two to six months to germinate <laughs> ah so probably get these in the ground, at least a couple just to see. And it says they're going to be about three to five feet in height. We'll see. And then the other thing I got, for those of you who want to give it a try and just see what happens, dragon fruit from seed. Again, I have absolutely no vision that I'm going to be succeeding here and actually getting fruit from this thing but maybe I win the lottery and I can afford to buy a greenhouse that's heated that I can keep stuff like this going you know citrus trees and all that kind of stuff you know with my my lime trees back here lemon trees lemon Meyer lemons um yeah I think I'm going a little overboard with the with the frost tender stuff so somebody stop me but yeah, this stuff, so again, this one, 7 to 28 weeks to germinate. <laughs> I'm going to forget I even have them by the time it does that. So yeah, this should be uh, start indoors 8 to 12 weeks before last frost. Germination temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, they like it warm. Days until maturity, 3 to 4 years. I should have done more <laughs> done a little bit more research okay so yeah we're almost at an hour here so let's wrap up and so this will go out probably the monday after new year's everyone have a great one and then following week we'll probably be starting on the veggie seeds that i have that i already have it's probably going to take one entire video to do the tomatoes god help me have a disease <laughs> it's called plantitis all right so everyone be good and i will talk to whoever and i hope you all enjoyed it like subscribe comment 